It's Jenny Cornell to talk more about it this morning. Good morning to you, Jenny. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right. We're going to talk about acceptance here. First thing on my mind actually comes to the weather <laughs> because you accepted <laughs> that cold before you stepped out the door and made it into work today, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Even though I feel pampered because I am parked in the garage now and it's a heated garage, so I really don't have to expose myself very much. But I was parking outside quite a bit <laughs> prior to getting the garage cleared out and getting the car started or just accepting like, you know what, it is what it is. That's mm -hmm. a saying that a lot of people associate with acceptance is it is what it is. And a lot, it's not always easy to do that because what it is may not be what we want it to be. Yeah. And so we feel like if we accept it and it's not what we want it to be, then that's what we're granting or approving is the thing that we didn't want it to be. Yeah. And do you find that in working with patients that it is difficult for us to look at that situation and think, well, you know, it's never going to get any better. One thing we talk about is resolutions or New Year's resolutions starting to sort of fall off this time of year. And I think acceptance applies to that situation too. Oh, very much so. You know, like you said, in order to change is first we have to acknowledge or accept what's happening at first. And so we'll set New Year's resolution like common one, weight loss. Mm -hmm. And and we want to, you know, we set these small measurable goals like I want to lose five pounds by next month, something like that. But in the over that month's time, all of a sudden we haven't lost that five pounds. And we have to look at problem solving like why haven't we looked at that? And sometimes that takes a little bit of acceptance of being able to see clearly of what's happening and that's what acceptance can help us is really look at things that we might be doing that are contributing to not meeting that goal or maybe looking at the things that we are doing that might need to be bumped up a little bit more to meet that goal of meeting losing weight like maybe i need to clear the chocolate off of my desk mm -hmm. or maybe i need to switch from um, putting creamer in my coffee to no creamer or mm -hmm. diet pop from regular pop or you know just making those changes but at least recognizing that and understanding Understanding and accepting what's going on is kind of like the first step in problem solving of, yeah. is acceptance. Yeah, I think this is a wonderful conversation to have today because it makes you look at this situation as how can we clear away those obstacles that keep getting us down? And it's actually more of a solution oriented mindset than it is defeating, defeatist. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, yep. Okay, so there is a type of talk therapy that really. Um, works to make progress in terms of acceptance. So tell us more about what that is. Yeah, that is called acceptance commitment therapy, so ACT. So it really kind of works on acknowledging and accepting and recognizing our emotions and not judging them, not putting pushing them away, but being able to accept our emotions as they are and figure out how can we work from them moving forward. Is this an emotion I need? Is this an emotion I don't? Is this a wanted emotion, an unwanted emotion? And and just accepting, because our emotions, as we've talked about before, are kind of responses to situation. So we can't always make somebody feel something. We can't always generate that. We might be able to do some behaviors that might be viewed positively, and then that person viewing it positively, they get positive benefits from it and then feel positive emotions. But we can't ever just make somebody happy That's it's true. usually a behavior or something that happens and then they perceive it as a good thing and then that generates that happy response so acceptance commitment therapy kind of works on that doing that for yourself finding that balance of what it is in front of you not judging it and really kind of looking at the facts of the situation be mindful and present mm -hmm. and then learning how to uh, continually move forward with that accept the emotion understand it and move forward from it because our emotions don't last forever. Mm -hmm. They they feel like it, and we like to really avoid those negative emotions because nobody wants to feel those negative emotions. But acceptance therapy really helps us with acknowledging that, accepting it, and being able to move forward both mentally and physically. Well, I think that's a great reminder too that those negative emotions don't last forever because when I'm feeling stressed or worried or something, I'm just thinking, I don't want to feel this way anymore. How long until I stop feeling this way? And I think the more that we practice this, the better we get at moving on to the next thing because and being present in the moment at hand. So it does have a lot of roots in mindfulness as we talk about every week with you. What I want to yeah. know is if I'm not good enough I shouldn't put it in those terms, but if I'm not at the level of being able to regulate 
emotions as they happen throughout the day? Does it help to take a moment at the end of the day or take a moment at the start of the day and just think about what can I accept today? What situations can I help myself work through in that way? Yes, I think and if any time of the day, any time that you're recognizing a problematic emotion or you're upset about something, sometimes the very way of de-escalating an emotion is by accepting it. Because mm. remember when we, you know, we don't really want to be angry, but yet the more that we think about it, the angrier we get. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a way, but if we accept that we're angry, even though we don't want to be angry, but we accept that we're angry, we don't escalate that emotion. We actually can de-escalate it and let make it less intensive yeah. by just acknowledging I'm angry or I'm irritated or I'm anxious. Yeah. By just saying that de-escalates that resistance. Well, how many times have you been venting to someone and say, I shouldn't be angry about this, but... And then you go on to vent about what you're angry about and it just kind of works itself up into something more. So just allow yourself to be angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what you do with that anger, that's what makes the difference for yourself in your own life consequences and choices. So working on this has both a physical and an emotional impact on your body. So tell us a yeah. little bit about those benefits. Yeah, a lot of researchers have found acceptance helps us really mitigate that stress response system. And that stress response creates all that extra steroid um, and systems that can actually tax and stress out our system more than what we need to. So if we're always constantly worrying all the time, we're getting this overactive stress response and our body's responding to it more than it really needs to because it's thinking that there's a threat. We're stressed, so it's going to react to this and that can wear some things out. By So by doing acceptance, that helps to reduce that stress response and get all that kind of settled down so that we're not as upset. It kind of helps with the blood pressure, all that of not getting too high strung about these things because when we are that way we'll probably make some rash decisions because we're not always our most rational at that time when we're in that stress response so that's kind of the physical benefits but then there's you know the mental health benefits and the emotional benefits of accepting because you're able to process that emotion a lot sooner a lot quicker and help get through that and move on from it the more you recognize it even if it's a negative emotion or a positive emotion the sooner you recognize it the the sooner you can move through it. So acceptance really helps accelerate that. Wonderful. Well, this is a really encouraging conversation to have, and I know that we can continue those conversations at Summit Counseling Services. Where do we find you, Jenny, if we want to ask questions? Absolutely. You can give us a call at Summit Counseling at 701-751-0299, or you can find us on Facebook or on the web or at one of our offices in Bismarck Dickinson or Williston. Thank you so much for your time and stay warm, Jenny. It is what it is. Thank you. You too. <laughs>